of bank privatization. Now we all know that it is the movement and struggle, a determined and sincere movement only can oppose this authoritarian no, move of the you. government. Now for that, we are organizing this webinar, which will be addressed by the General Secretary of Central of Indian Trade Union, CITU, as well as the member of the Politburo of Communist Party of India, Marxist, from the top on Sen. Now we all know that this government is suppressing all voices of opposition's policies in every other way. Very recently, we know that from 26, the five federation of civilian defense employees decided to go on for indefinite strike against the move of corporatization of the ordinance factory board. Now, before this, a draconian ordinance has been promulgated by the government, restraining all kind of movement in the defense sector. And not only that, they have included some clauses of punishment overriding the Industrial Disputes Act. So this is the authoritarian attitude of the government of India against which we have to build our movement and struggle. Now, so far, banking sector is concerned. Since the lockdown came into force about 17 months ago, there have been series of movements of the government against the working class of the country in general. We have observed that several state governments have suspended labor laws in their states. Some state governments contemplated to increase the working hours from eight hours to 12 hours. And the very initial stage, the government of India frozen the dearness allowance and dearness relief of the central government employees and retirees respectively, which was followed by many of the state governments. Now, banking sector was of no exception. There was a series of attacks on the banking sectors also. During the lockdown period, with suspension of the public transport, the general bank employees suffered like anything to reach their working places and work in an atmosphere totally vulnerable. Secondly, we have seen that the Banking Regulation Amendment Act 2020 has been passed in order to corporatize the cooperative banking sector. We have seen that a 94-year-old private sector bank, that is Lokhi Villas Bank, wandered over to a wholly owned subsidiary of, the, of a foreign bank, which has never happened in our country. In all the occasions, the private sector banks were either taken over by another private sector bank with Indian origin or by a public sector bank. So this is a new phenomenon. There has been mega merger. Ten public sector banks were merged into four. Now, the labor codes has been passed in the parliament. All these occasions, it is a pity that the platform of the bank employees unions and associations that the United Forum of Bank Unions preferred to keep silent. And only after the announcement of the public privatization of public sector bank finance by the finance minister on 1st February, EOBU came into agitational movement. Two day strike was observed on 15th and 16th March. But after that, given the second wave, we could not form any effective movement against the movement of the privatization. Now, it is also a fact that the government is not sitting idle. We know the developments. I'm not going into it. But what I would like to place before you that we should not take this privatization move of the public sector banks in isolation. It is a part of the move of the government of wholesale privatization of the public sector enterprises. So it is imperative in our part that to build a movement within the sector, we have to associate ourselves with the border working class movement of the country against the government policies. 
without which we cannot put an effective resistance to the government. It is also very unfortunate that after 2013, and since the NDA one government came into power in 2014, the United Forum of Bank Unions did not associate itself with any of the move of the working class of the country. After 2014, the Bharatiya Mazdu Sangha was isolated from the broader working class movement. And since then, particularly in your view, there has been no discussion whether we should get associated with these movements or not. But it is most important that we should get associated with the, all these countrywide movement. Now, so far as today's phenomena is concerned, it is a very welcome development that a broad-based unity has been developed between the working class and the peasantry of the country. And uh, jointly, many such movements has been organized. And we should be happy that on the very first day of the two-day strike, that is on 15th March, 2021, the whole working class and the peasantry observed anti-privatization day on 15th March, and there were series of program by the peasants organizations. And we observed that CIT comrades and leaders, they approached and arrived at the bank gates in many places, in thousands of places where they addressed the bank employees, striking bank employees, as well as the common people. So it is very important that we develop this unity and particularly, it is also important to reach the common people and the customers in general. Now, taking advantage of this lockdown, the government tried to confine ourselves with four walls. But we have to form our movement. These means the social media platform, of course. This is generating some kind of uh, awareness amongst us. It is giving opportunity to reach people all across the country. We must not these are the alternative of the traditional movement on streets in visual form. It is very important that all our movements be visible to the whole of the country. And this is the need of the hour. So for this, we have organized this seminar to hear from Nana Raddan, the general secretary of CITU, who is one of the main architects of the working class movement of the country. Now, before I uh, hand over the responsibility to the coordinator of this evening, uh, Comrade Jawadev Das Gupta, Vice President of Federation, I would like to express our sincere thanks to the media team of Befi Kerala, who extended their cooperation in a very nice and uh, wonderful manner that we could organize these webinars in a very smooth way. I would express sincere gratitude on behalf of Bank Employees Federation of India to the three economists, the eminent economists with international fame who have addressed our sessions and of course responded to the questions in a very nice and uh, very lucid manner that have enriched all of us. Today, Definitely will be in this for our struggle in the days ahead from Comrade Tapon Sen. And last but not the least, the participants, participants of present bank employees, though we expected a little more working employees to participate in these webinars, many of our retirees friends, pensioners associations friends, and of course of different fraternal organizations, they also participated in all these webinars. I would express my sincere thanks to all of you on behalf of Bank Employees Federation of India. Now I would request the coordinator of today's program, Comrade Rajiv Das Gupta, to continue today's session. Thank you, comrades. Thank you, Comrade Devashish Bashu Chaudhary, General Secretary, Bank Employees Federation of India. Today is the last uh, lecture that will be given by Comrade Tapon Shen. General Secretary, CITU, and the member of Politburo, Communist Party of India, Marxist. So, this lecture, I would confine, because time constant is there. 
we have to conclude these webinars within 8.30. So, I would request Comrade Tapol Shen to address this webinar. The time limit will be 40 to 45 minutes. After that, our uh, participants can, uh, can ask for some questions or some clarifications. And I will request all the participants to confine their questions or clarification within the subject matter today. So, Comrade, Bank Employees Federation of India, since its foundation, are with the working class movement. And since 1991, the Bank Employees Movement, especially our federation, have joined all the struggles, all the strikes, general strike, whether it is all in the industrial strike, we have participated all the strikes. In the interest of the working class movement. So, now we are uh, observing that the government is ahead with the IPO in the Life Insurance Corporation of India. We can recall the 26 years back, the Bank Employees Movement, especially Bank Employees Federation of India, faced this move of the government in Canada Bank, Bank of India, and then other banks. At that time, only Bank Employees Federation of India organized strike in banks. After that, after the formation of United Forum of Bank Unions, all the unions came forward to oppose the government move. So we are the helm of struggle for last 30 years. And there is no need to introduction of Comrade Topon Shen because he is very well known to us. In last conference of Bank Employees Federation of India in Thiruvanthapuram, he was this main speaker, he was the inaugurator, he spoke twice in delegate session and in open session also. He attended all the seminars where he was invited in conventions, in the affiliate units conferences, and in the demonstration organized in Delhi and other states. Where he was invited, he joined. He led the bank employees movement. Even in the deputation, he led the deputation of Bank Employees Federation in India not only in the commercial banks or the public sector banks, in cooperative sector, in regional rural banks, when the associations invited him to address, to lead, he always participated. So he is very well known to us. He is the leader of the working class movement, and especially when we invited him to join us in demonstration, in seminars, in convention, in conferences, he always attended these events. So with this, I will invite Comrade Tapon Chen to address this webinar. And I am welcoming all the participants of BEFI, the retirees, the BEFI members, retirees, the federal organizations who are <coughs> participating in this webinar. All are welcome. So, I would request Comrade Tapon Shen to address. Thank you. Ananda, I have a meeting. I have a question. Comrade, the leaders of the Bank Employees Federation of India, Comrade Devashish, Comrade Nanda Kumar, Comrade Joydev, and others. Uh, uh, thank you for inviting me to this webinar on the occasion of the Bank Nationalization Month, I must say. We are in the Bank Nationalization Month, so to say, about 52 years before. And on the occasion, we are, when we are holding this uh, webinar, we are in the face of a most barbarous attack of not merely of privatization, but also incomprehensive approach. Agar if, if somebody wants to understand the whole thing that is going on in the economic policy front and its reflection in the political system, political governance, and social governance 
comprehensively it is a process of centralization and authoritarianization of the entire governance governance of the economy governance of the political system and including the governance of the society and this uh, is necessitated this is necessitated for the ruling class we may take name of modi but modi is nothing but a pawn or a player in the system it is the capitalist class which is in the midst of never before witnessed crisis not merely in our country but globally and neo any dose of neoliberalism cannot address the crisis and some of the proponents of neoliberalism has to admit that neoliberalism has come to its dead end and so they are taking such step which is beyond the scope of normal comprehension unexpected level trampling under foot the whole basic tenets of the democratic governance system in respect of governance of economy governance of the political system and the governance of the society all taken together it is their comprehensive project to address themselves in the era of deepening crisis of the whole system and that's why the their basic project is complete authoritarianization of the governance with a clear fascistic intent and definitely in that kind of a situation logic will always not prevail and this in the functioning of the uh, government and in the era when logic does not prevail it is becoming a very big challenge before the working class movement of which you are an integral part and it requires a different kind of preparation widening ending widening of the scope of activities that's the challenge of the time and this understanding also we have learned from the history of different mile and also different milestone events in the world working class movement since its inception the ultimately things can be turned they are not indefeatable and with that confidence i think we must address the issue now uh, as uh, comrade devashi has told that earlier three phase of webinars has taken place which are addressed by prominent economists and academias comrade prabhat patnaik comrade ram kumar and others who have explained to you the context of the banking sector's role in the economy i have the opportunity of hearing comrade prabhat uh, on record so uh, they have dealt that the whole economics part of it and its reflection in the overall national economy and also to some extent in the politics here as a trade union activist and a part of your own movement we don't separate us from your own movement a part of your own movement uh, i think i should deal and dwell on the areas how should we respond we are responding already and the present situation the demand of the situation for qualitatively changed response to the events that are unfolding before us that needs to be i think uh, it is better to dwell on that since other theoretical economic policy aspect has been dealt at length but even then a minimum background is required to be uh, addressed here 
that overall context of the, the, the development right from the days of bank nationalization till today when it is facing a severe onslaught. And at this moment, no camouflage. When the liberalization has taken off, we have say, heard the Amrita Banis from the uh, mouth of Dr. Manmohan Singh and other great people who govern the country. They talk of efficiency, they talk of efficiency of the financial system. Even while talking about that efficiency, that efficiency will ensure, ensure much widening of the credit net of the banking sector, etc., etc. All these have been argued upon at different spill of time, both inside the parliament and outside. It's quite natural that ruling class always seek a justification of the misdeeds they, they will be continue to do. And they always find a justification of that. And they promote that justification, spread that justification with the use of media and they are paid intellectuals, all taken together. And there is no denying of thing that the, at the onset of neoliberalism, even a section of our own movement also did misguided by that propaganda. That neoliberalism will spread the growth of the economy and by way that way bring prosperity to all. And you, there is no denying of the fact that a segment of upper middle class and to some extent middle class initially appears to get some benefit in the onset of the neoliberalization process. It was needed for the then ruling class to get support from down below so that the resistance could be avoided. But the one important thing to be noted in our movement, and I think I must start with that, that will give our movement a much bigger confidence, that this effort, despite all this effort, the bank employees movement as a whole, and Befi in particular, played a very frontline role in developing organized opposition and a kind of resistance, which can be also be turned as a resistance on the greater sense of the term from the day one. And that is why today the nationalized bank, the public sector banks are there in its public sector status till now. No doubt a lot of restructuring has taken place. No doubt merger the number of banks was reduced and resulting in the elimination of a big number of branches also, thereby squeezing the banking space in the society. No doubt all these things happen, but they are yet to succeed in changing the PSB character of the public sector bank, which were nationalized in 1969. I think that must give us confidence and it holds good not merely for banking sector alone. Overall financial sector, our experience is the same. And also, you may see that the whole public sector network, till now 80%, 85% of the public sector companies are in the place, are still in public sector status. Although the government again and again they announced their resolve to completely privatize the public sector network of the country, they did it, but they could not succeed as yet. We don't take it as a very complacency, a phenomena of complacency, no doubt of it. But at the same time, we should not come to a conclusion that they are, are indefeatable. We should not move with that approach. We will be able to finally resist with that confidence. We must move on. Comrade, in this context, one other another issue need to be brought into focus. So what is the background of bank nationalization? Independent of India, of post-independence, immediately banks were not nationalized. Post-independence, the independent India. 
a whole economic process are being subjected to severe blackmail by the metropolitan capital, the imperialist capital. We then rulers of our country move from country to country, door to door, forgetting technology, forgetting industry, forgetting infrastructural investment. They did it. They failed. And on the other hand, the banking sector, which was basically under private sector and under the control of monopoly bourgeoisie, also are not responding to the basic need which our planning system envisaged. 1956 industrial policy resolution envisaged that an independent country requires self-reliance and technology, self-reliance in infrastructure, self-reliance in major industrial activities. Our dependence on the metropolitan capital must reduce. Then only we can spread, we can embark on the path of horizontal growth of the industrialization, not vertical. The classical capitalist order, which was prevalent when we became independent, every step of that is moving in just on the opposite direction. When the need of the hour was horizontal expulsion of the economy, they are going on basic it's the law of capitalist development, the classical sense. They move by gradual centralization, killing the small fishes, I mean to say small and other in, in, industries. That, that was the general trend of the whole capitalist production process. And in a newly liberated country's economy, which was in extreme backward situation, when we got the independence, needs an horizontal expansion. And the basic roadblock was being created by the capitalist forces. And at that time, our country's big bourgeoisie are yet to be in the pocket of the, or developing that homeliness with the metropolitan capital, as is the case now. They don't have any contradiction now between themselves the Indian capital and metropolitan capital. Not that kind of a antagonistic contradiction among themselves. But at that time, that was a phenomenon. But two important things that came up. One, the socialist countries came forward to give us steel, coal, and many other engineering industries, along with technology transfer. And at the same time, which embarked put the in India on an active spate of realization, I mean, industrialization. And at the same time, another crucial policy decision, which was there in the 1956 industrial policy resolution, that our strategy should be import substitution. And if import, that is our import dependence has to reduce. If we are to be away from the, if we are to, save ourselves from the blackmailing of the imperialist capital, which is a natural phenomenon in this global world, the global economy. So on this requirement of the national economy, and at the same time, a very vibrant working class movement, which was has its origin in the pre-independence period of movement. Just one year back, we have completed the centenary year of the first ever Central Trade Union in the country, AITUC, just one year before, in 2020. We have completed the centenary year. I'm telling you, there is a vibrant movement, working class movement. They also played their role. There are many struggle, many braving brutalities and attacks and atrocities. And that also created an environment developing a gradually narrative for assertion of the people's right, 
they are economic development that generation employment by expansion of employment generation that also created a narrative and all taken together we must say that that in the political situation and so within the ruling class certain contradictions are also developing that the classical mode of capitalist operation need to have a spanner to be put on it if the economic for growth has to be made horizontal and the contradiction that created was generated that was also reflected in the political domain also you can just note the time when bank was nationalized 1969 in that decades five years before five years after it is not merely bank nationalization almost around the same period coal sector which was under private sector was nationalized around the same year one year here and one year there the another important segment of the financial sector also brought under national control around the same period another important ingredient of our industrial economy the petroleum sector a part of them multinational companies were forcibly nationalized and the government of india invested itself in developing indian oil corporation and other ONGC and other big petroleum sector behemoth, both on the upstream and downstream sector. These are the development, and in the background of the developing contradiction within the ruling class, that is the capitalist class, which was reflected on political phenomena. If we try to recall the political events happening in the right from the mid 60s. and continuing till 1977 it was a big period at that time the monopoly role on indian government in indian governance both at the center and in the state by a single party that period has ended a concept of coalition was developed in the governance through a process and in the midst of that political doldrum or i must not say doldrum the political development which is gradually trying to bring about a change in the correlation of forces and all taken together on the economic front it was reflected in the bank nationalization and many other nationalization number one number two a aggressive state investment in the infrastructure sector a number of new public sector companies developed in different industries and at the same time the bank nationalization the financial sector nationalization has played a most important role in horizontalizing the economic process much more effectively with protection as well as promotion the msme sector middle and small scale sector which has to develop if industrialization has to develop expand horizontally because ancillarization is a important uh, uh, component of our whole industrial economic process it has to develop and at the same time countries agriculture first five year plan it was wholly dedicated on agriculture so that plant food prices and etc address it could not just take off before the bank nationalization process and post bank nationalization we see the green revolution and gradual self reliance achieved by our country in the matter of food production the whole concept of priority sector lending that came which mainly focused on agriculture peasant agriculture in particular and on the other hand msme sector it led to that horizontal expansion of the economic activity both in urban india and in rural india 
both in industries and in agriculture and different other services as developed through that process. Here, the bank nationalization and re-channelizing of the bank credit. The, in the capitalism, we are already in the age of finance capital and bank is the holder of the finance capital. The is movement is progress has all taken together contributed to this. This is a big achievement of our movement. This is a big achievement in our process against fighting the extreme right reaction to bring them, even within this capitalist order, to a more or less flow people, horizontal concept of development, which is required for a newly independent country with a lot of dose of protection and promotion protection from unholy competition, and at the same time, promotion through the process of subsidization and many other economic incentives, all taken together, it went on. And you will see the host of subsidies, incentives, reservations. These all was formulated, the policies were formulated, but these policies could be effectively put into operation because only through appropriate channelization of the bank credit through the priority direction, despite all limitations of a government ruled by the big landlord and bourgeois. Despite all, there is an overriding necessity for deed and bourgeoisie to further expand. This is number one. And at the same time, that overriding necessity, in the background of that overriding necessity, our movement, the movement of the working class, also played an important role in promoting that kind of an atmosphere, developing that kind of a narrative, which led to the big event like bank nationalization, nationalization, mineral sector nationalization, which are all essential ingredient, power sector uh, expansion, which are essential ingredient for the industrialization as well as strengthening the agriculture, establishing the food security. All these became possible because of that policy of protection as well as promotion. And bank, nationalized banking sector, along with nationalized financial sector, was a very, very crucial, important instrument for that. We achieved it through struggle, and through that process, we could come up to the level where India is still standing as an economic force. Now, neoliberalism sought to reverse that model. No more promotion, no more protection, global village, this is the basic philosophy of neoliberalism. And after the collapse of Soviet Union and other major socialist area, this force came, became much more dominant and it has got its also reflection in the pushing through of liberalization, neoliberalism, which is altogether a different phenomenon where protection, promotion, of the economy, national economy, with the, with the perception of a self-reliance has become a very when a forbidden world. It should fully depend on market and market is the only efficient allocator of resources in the economy. That is a return back from a welfareism, self-reliance, the very philosophy of protection and promotion for nation building to a classical capitalism along with the expression of all its barbarousness. And we have completed three decades of that neoliberal time. And what is our experience? that gradually situation is reaching to a stage which proved 
successfully, very when effectively, the complete inefficacy of the neoliberal order to address the even the crisis of the capitalist order. And the reason for that crisis is inbuilt in the whole capitalist process itself. That came to light. And so today we find no more, everything has got an evolution. At an initial stage, there are logic of, the, the, the wrong logic of efficiency, uh, operational efficiency, uh, all these things are being argued upon to support privatization process. Nowadays, even that camouflage is not required. They are openly telling that there will be no public sector. They are not required for the economy. And here, the present attack of privatization, they it embraces the entire economy. Even the defense production is being targeted. And it's a dangerous uh, consequence where it can go. So far as country security is concerned, defense preparedness is concerned. And in that sense, it is a very big betrayal to the national cause, the manner this government is moving ahead for defense sector production privatization. They are broken in integrated money and the compatibility each other all the 49, 41 ordinance factory into seven pieces by seven different company, where one company will become a customer of another company under the Companies Act. And only to open the door for privatization. And by the end of the day, the conspiracy is much deeper here, why I'm just referring to very quick reference, that Finally, the, our defense sector requirement, Indian private sector today is not competent to produce. Even during Manmohan Singh's time, a part of the ordinance factory products were outsourced to private agencies, despite opposition of a union. But after two and a half years, it has to come back as it is. They could not deliver. Delivery with quality and re rigid timeline. They failed totally. And it all came back to ordinance factories again. Now they are going ahead further because they want to make the whole ordinance factory network an ineffective tool by which finally the benefit will go to the metropolitan capital who will be exporting or we will be importing our defense requirements because whenever the question of defense requirement will come uh, there will be a always a remain there will be an urgency and will fall into trap modi government is conspiring to completely dismantle india's defense preparedness they are betraying the nation and what is important that the that betraying face is to be exposed before the people and here comes our responsibility of the working class movement in exposing this i am not going into detail of how that input we only got from you that post bank nationalization of the bankable area has increased manifold priority sector lending has increased through public sector bank and private sector bank kept themselves away from the priority sector lending. Number of branches increased. RRB network was developed. Now they are trying to put the clock back. And this is going to seriously affect the people. What is important for us, trade union movement, along with carrying on the resistance struggle, is to establish our linkage with the people to make them understand how they will suffer if banks are privatized. Who will be managing their Jandhan Jojana account? Through which now different benefits, welfare schemes are making direct benefit, direct transfer of benefits through those Jandhan accounts. 
who will be processing that Jamdan account. Even today, the public sector banks are holding more than 95% of the Jamdan small accounts. Many of them become dormant. Many dormant accounts are again revitalized when taken up with the concerned banks. And the diligence to our public sector banking system has shown private sector will never do it because they don't, they operate through outsourcing. They operate basically through contract working. They will not handle smaller accounts. They will not handle people's accounts. You are already competent with all the database with you on that matter. I think that needs to be in a popular form has to be carried to the people to involve them, to draw their support in your resistance struggle against bank nationalization. And so a much different orientation is required in today's requirement, the challenge before that against the bank privatization. It's no doubt, despite all weaknesses, the United Forum of Bank Unions has played a role over a period. And that is also one of the reasons that banks are in their place, public sector bank, till now. Till now, in their place. They are planning many other things. They have targeted two banks now to identify them and then put a point transaction advisor to supervise, preside over their sale. But many, much water is also required to be flown through the Ganges, even in completion of that process. What is important that what they are going to do, that need to be appropriately exposed before the people in a convincing manner. That is a major challenge ours. And at the same time, we have to carry this message to the every individual bank employees at the grassroots level. Not merely that we are against privatization. Workers are in generally bank employees are against privatization. But why so? It is not merely their job security, but the future of their own family, next generations, their sons, their daughters, future of the entire economy within which they are surviving. This linkage need to be exposed before them to develop a comparative study of how people will gain or lose if banks are privatized and who are the gainers behind the bank privatization. These facts need to be carried more diligently to the people as well as bank employees. And as a trade union activist, I think I can speak frankly before you, this job is yet to be done with the required effectivity which this situation demands. Not merely my job protection among the, so far as the bank employees are concerned. Also its background, background of the economic policy. Bank privatization is just not bank privatization as a separate economic measure. It is a part of the whole privatization process as well as auctioneering process of the national assets and resources, including its mineral resources. At one point of time, our mineral resources, there are restrictions for export because they are not tradable. So far as coal is concerned, Coal commercial sale was, array, uh, was allowed only for household consumption and rest used to go for to industry, to power sector. Nowadays, the government has changed this approach, enacted the mineral uh, amendment bill, uh, mineral development amendment bill, and made these minerals tradable that if required, we'll sell, we can, if we get more money, we'll sell it abroad. It is an absolutely tradable community, commodity. The country's requirement will no more be a priority. 
the whole concept of captive mining will be given a complete go by in that direction government is going ahead so it is an overall economic program where this present government is operating as a consp conspirator against the national economic interest against the national economic interest and at present level of crisis when extreme right wing forces are raising their hand it is bound to be for a segment of the capitalist world particularly the richer world they will act on ultra nationalism and protectionism although as per wto philosophy protectionism is a bad word and today the highest level of protectionism is being promoted by usa highest level of protectionism is now being promoted by usa and at the same time other advanced european countries in a different manner and at the same time for the developing countries they are pushing through to dismantle the promotion and protection policy on the small sector industries and against agriculture the agriculture law against which the peasants are fighting is a product of that approach where protection promotion subsidy support a segment on which countries more than 65% depends upon that requires a protection promotion and subsidies they are completely doing away with that regime and the last three agricultural laws that has been passed by the parliament against which the kisans are fighting in the delhi border continuously for 8 months they are continuing and the result we must take note of the execution of these three agricultural laws could not yet take off what our movement can do i think that is a clear expression of that could not yet take off on the other hand they have completely changed the labor laws to labor code they are going ahead with making rules and notifying that and that pick about the label on which we have to carry our struggle involving the mass of the workers towards a defiance and resistance that's the need of the hour and we are sure the indian working class movement is having enough potential to raise themselves to that height we have that potential and that potential speaks about that the public 90% of the public sector are in their place till now although the move was started initiated 3 decades back by narsimha rao monmohan singh and company they have also damaged a lot during their 10 years rule which finally paved the way for coming modi to power they could not address the crisis rising inequality squeezing of the market and capitalism is falling in the trap of much more downward pressure they could not address it because the requirement to have a concept of promotion requirement was there to have a concept of promotion and uh, the protection and subsidization with a clear orientation towards horizontal growth they betrayed that process with the onset of neoliberalization and that paved the way for coming of the extreme right wing force to the power for two successive term and now they become desperate barbarous no camouflage to push ahead their scheme of things but that also was experimented on indian governance soil immediately coming to power modi has listed out 48 public sector companies for strategic sale 
cabinet has given a clearance. Tender was floated number of times. Not a single could yet be privatized as of now. Not a single could be privatized. Because in most of those areas, ground level resistance could be developed. And atmosphere is so created that despite of floating of tender again and again, bidders are not coming forward. They're thinking twice, where shall I put my money? If we put it, whether that will be safe, there are so much resentment, so much unrest. We have to develop that kind of analytic in the banking sector as well. And that is possible only and only when every individual bank employee would be aligned with this consciousness that I am fighting privatization not only for me, but my children, but for the future generation. And bank privatization process is not merely handing over a bank to private hand. It is more than that. It is sabotaging the it is a sabotaging conspiracy against the future of our nation. Every of us, it has to rouse their patriotic sense, taking exposing this entire process. That need to be done much more aggressively. The level of consciousness need to be heightened. And in that process, we am sure we'll be able to develop that kind of a resistance by which we can defeat their game plan finally. Working class movement may retreat for the time being, but they never accept defeat in that sense. That is the development of the working class movement throughout the world. Now under the global capitalism, crisis of global capitalism. People are coming in a very big way. They are aggressive right-wing nation where forces are raising their hand with rightist populism. No democracy, more authoritarianism, some relief to people. That was a punch to further privatize and further centralize the economic power not only in our country, globally, that was the phenomena. But that is not the only phenomena. During this period, there are resistance also. And many places, particularly in the era of Latin America, we have noticed that in many places, right-wing forces could be made to retreat in Bolivia, in Peru, in Chile, and many other places. There's a continuing process because at the Lifeline of this struggle was the working class struggle, those who are producing for the society. So in that sense, I think that's the crucial task before us. And let us take up that task, going to the people, and at the same time, reaching each and every bank employees. In a multiplicity of union situation, there will be problems. That was an historic phenomenon in our country. But there was not much of a problem coming in the span of last three decades to bring all the central trade unions on the same platform. At the initial decade of neoliberalism, whenever I was also a public sector worker, whenever we used to talk on privatization, many of the unions are telling that you are doing politics. Now everybody is opposing privatization, including BMS. They cannot openly stand in support of privatization. That compulsion was done. In the coal workers' three-day strike against commercial mining, BMS union was an active participant. In the steel workers' strike held on last 30th of June in sale and RINL, public sector steel industry, BMS was an active participant. A compulsion created. The workers has created that compulsion. If workers could be reached, employees could be reached, and they could be apprised of the real scenario and the root cause, the real conspiracy, 
in a term in the manner understandable by them with a very diligent campaign process of reaching the entire unreached linking the issue with the policy structure and exposing the politics behind the policies this comprehensive approach if we address the thing in present situation they are ready to respond on it problem is as an trade unionist as a trade union activist our experience whenever we are discussing through our different state committees people are ready to respond the problem is one of reaching them we have to make our program to reach all through repetitive campaign about exposing the thing among the bank fraternities and at the same time establish a link with the people to make them understand what you are fighting against while fighting against the privatization policy against the banks you are no more no not only fighting you are not just fighting for your job security but fighting for the country the people will stand to lose heavily if this regime is completely shifted a priority sector lending has been given a go by a promotional approach has been given a go by it cannot survive and at the end another issue also need to be taken just to expose the conspiracy against the national interest by the present ruling class the insolvency bankruptcy procedure resolution earlier bank corporates used to take loan they used to default there are systems of debt recovery sarfarusi some teeth was there although it was also not a very full proof mechanism but ibc insolvency bankruptcy procedure code that was enacted unfortunately supported by the entire political community so to say unfortunately supported by the entire i repeat at that time i was in parliament supported by the entire political community except the left this insolvency procedure has practically legalized that the corporate defaulters will be allowed to go scot free by not paying the major part of their loan liability with the bank it is a loot and loot has been legalized and an unique example is one of video video con a 35000 crore loan portfolio finally settled through national company law tribunal process in lieu of 2932 crores the average level of haircut banks are being compelled to accept is to the tune of 70% plus till now whatever cases are sorted out this fact also played out the loot has been legalized earlier it would have been an offense even as an individual if i take some money and i don't pay it back you can go and file an fir against me this is a serious offense subject to the strong penalizing measure it is a criminal offense but for corporates it's no offense at all in the insolvency bankruptcy procedure this loot is being personalized by legalized and it is a process of a transfer of wealth public wealth bank money means public wealth to individual beneficiaries who will be the donor community of the present ruling class this criminality also need to be exposed before the people at large and also among the bank employees on what they are presiding over yet till now i believe these insolvency bankruptcy procedures real ugly face could yet not be exposed before the people despite we are trying for it but you bank employees has to take a lead in exposing that also i think in this process 
we have to develop resistance. There is no other option before us. And when we could achieve bank nationalization, mind it, it was not a socialist country. Mind it, till that time, the trade union movement was not that unified in the 69. A real united movement was on, put into regular operation. It is in the 70s only, after 70s, rather post-emergency. A continuous united action by the entire trade union. At that time, it was not that united. There are concepts within the trade union movement that a part of the ruling class is progressive enough, so we must collide with them. CI2 was born out of that process to keep the working class movement on the track. But even then, we could achieve bank nationalization, insurance nationalization, coal sector nationalization. Even then, we could achieve. Because it became a social legitimacy. We could establish that social legitimacy. Today, they are challenging that legitimacy and legalizing the most illegitimate looting process on the country. If this can well be exposed, then people will stand against people. them. It is essentially a political exercise. Political exercise does not mean joining, belonging to a particular political party. Political exercise means when the governance moving in an anti-national direction without any logic, economic logic, for taking up all these economic process, intervening them, and the strength on the basis of which they are going on doing to remove them from that stature and sense, that has to be the direction in our movement to help the people identify the real enemy before them. It is this authoritarianization process led by present government with a clear fascistic intent, with the active support of the capitalist, corporate capitalist class who are also presiding over the perversion that was generated on the economy. It is not merely making bank, compelling bank to accept 70, 75% haircut. That is their legitimate loan recovery has to be sacrificed in favor of individual corporates who made money, not only NCLT. In the process of framework of NCLT, there are out of court settlements are also taking place. In that case, even the defaulter company is again regaining control on his company, even after declare, being declared bankrupt. This process is also legitimized by the insolvency bankruptcy code. It's a horrible kind of, these also need to be exposed before the people, and definitely there will be, will be able to stall that process. Indication was there that they are started retreating. And that's why they became so desperate. And when they are in desperation, I think this expression of desperation is a reflection of their weakness. So with that confidence and optimism, we have to intervene. Our movement has to intervene. We don't consider your movement and our CI2 movement is something separate. You are part integral part of the same movement. We have to intervene, reaching every worker, bringing them to that level of consciousness in order to initiate a process of defiance and resistance. There will be DSO, Essential Defense Service Ordinance. Are you to accept that you cannot strike if the strike is really needed? We have to define. And that can be defined. When three days strike in coal sector has taken place in the midst of pandemic, in UP, in Madhya Pradesh, all the labor laws were suspended for 300 days. That is for almost for a one year. Suspended, including right to strike. But entire UP and Madhya Pradesh, all the coal belt, the strike was to the tune of 100%. And Jogi Adityanath, nor that Madhya Pradesh government could do anything to the coal workers. Who will do? 
we have to carry our struggle to that height. And in bank movement, you have that potential. You have done many times. Already there are 46 sectoral level strike, besides 20 national strike, national level general strike, in which bank employees movement, BFI in particular, and also IBA has participated. Your other constituent of your, your view, sometimes participated, sometimes stayed away. They have got their own limitations and problems. We have to appreciate that also. And we have to keep the flock together. And at the same time, when struggle is oriented, we have to go ahead. And if we could maintain an atmosphere of continuous intervention, 15, 16 March, your strike, public has appreciated any very, very big way. This is the experience, this is the feedback we got from outside banking sector, from the common people, this strike. And these four days, including LIC and general insurance strike, it has created an impact, but they are right in going on the strike. So you have that potential. We have to exploit that potential. And through that, we have to go in for defying. And in that direction, you should try to activize your joint platform to the extent possible and go in for repetitive strike action at a gap with a periodic frequency. And that atmosphere needs to be created to give a message that you are not going, government is not going to get work over. I believe we will win. Through this process, you have 46 strikes in the last three decades. You are still now could retain the public sector bank as public sector. And by further mounting up or rather mopping up that exercise, with a planned manner, whosoever comes, we will be able to ensure continuity of the same situation to defeat the ill motive, anti-national motive of the present government, present right wing reactionary government. And in that direction, against right reaction and fascistic authoritarian tendency, in defense of democracy, we have to develop our struggle, working class, as an historic responsibility of leading that struggle. Today, workers or peasants are fighting together. The two main producing community have come together for a joint struggle against the Modi rule. I think that background also will help you to develop that struggle. Thank you, comrade. With this, I conclude my submission presentation in your webinar. Thank you. Many, many thanks, Comrade Taponshan. I think some questions have come in your chat yes, box. Sir. So uh, you select some questions because we have not much time to our hands. So within uh, 15 minutes, you can speak. OK. But where shall I get your chat box? Why am I to I think some of you can read out and put the question that will be helpful for me. One comment I have seen in the chat box that we must strengthen our organization to discharge the task that has come upon us. I think that is no question, but a very suggestion and well taken suggestion. Any other question if it comes? One question is like that. Hmm. Am I audible? Commercial? Yes, yes. One question, will the working class of India ever rise to the level of the fighting peasants of our country? You see, the modality of the peasant struggle and modality of the working class struggle cannot be one and the same. The peasants are sitting there for eight months from Punjab, Uttar Pradesh, Haryana. Their land is in their place. Worker cannot go and sit there like that. They will lose their job. The whole structure of the trade union movement is workplace level activities, collectivity, confederated in 
a bigger struggle, national level struggle. Sometimes it was confederated in the sectoral struggle. You have so many banks, every bank level union has to act for making a bank action successful. So it is basically workplace level, the whole composition and character of the, and they have nothing to lose but their job. So in that, in that kind of a situation, we have to develop resistance from the micro level. And then only national level resistance can be developed. And our experiences during last three decades, that it can be developed. Many places it could be developed and areas could be saved. Yes. One vital question is there. The need of the hour is to give a call for independent strike to not only the banking sector, but to observe for countrywide industrial strike. Is it possible? You see, I don't, I am not in agreement with the thing that need of the hour is to give going for indefinite strike. There are other methods as well. A, one thing you must take note of that the working class is composed of different components. Bank employees are there, organized sector employees are there, unorganized sector employees are also there. And when you see on the street, we'll see much more unorganized sector workers on the street in support of the organized sector worker struggle against privatization. So there are different uh, strategies has to be adapted by simply telling, calling for an indefinite strike, it will not work. You have to keep that temperature high in the workplace through continuous interventions and actions that may create a ground for multiple day strike actions at one point of time and developing a ground for an indefinite strike wherever required. May not be at a national level, but in many sectoral level, that trial can be given as defense workers plan to go in for indefinite strike from 26 July, which was stopped because of the ordinance. And they are now planning their activities in consideration of the situation. So it can be done, but what is important is to maintain the continuity and continuously raise the temperature of the workplaces on these issues. And for that required reaching the workers to make them not only understand the danger the on its face value, but the real danger rooted in it. The whole politics of privatization and authoritarianization. Next question. Will the government has to take responsibility for that. Yes. Next question. Will the working class of India ever rise to the level of the fighting peasants of the country? We are working together, fighting together, company. The entire solidarity action throughout the country, not merely in Delhi border, it was done by the trade union only, not the peasantry. Pedantry action in the village was not visible. They are one of the major call blockade the Andadi and Ambani showroom. It was executed by the workers only, trade unions only, very actively. But at the same time, they are also required to address their own issue, the danger that is coming on them, on their organizational existence through the application of labor code. On that also, a resistance need to be developed. It will not merely only for solidarity. Today's situation is there. The fight, if we consider that both privatization of banks and the agricultural laws are a scheme of authoritarianizing the governance, economic governance of the country and all other privatization together, if that be the thing, the need of the hour is to develop much more militant struggle by the trade union on their own issues against privatization, against uh, corporatization and so on and so forth. And all other, other demands, trade union rights, defense of the trade union rights and other demands. That is the need of the hour. It cannot yes. be of the same narrative and the same type because two sectors are altogether different. Right, comment. Next question. How are 
how our unions are going to get the support of the common people and any strategy could be given yes this we have to do your union you have to take because you have the input we also do have some input we receive from you why bank privatize why not bank privatization that need to be taken that root cause not only on its face value to your employees to make them more militant expression assertion in the struggle and at the same time this is taken to the people at large people started realizing but and also they are quite responsive if we reach them they will respond to make them understand how what is the kind of disaster it will create if it is allowed to succeed definitely people will stand by your side but you have to share that struggle and at the same time inter trade union movement we are also doing through our organizational channel trying to develop this consciousness against the real face of the privatization that is the Take comprehensive it. scheme of the inter trade union movement yes comrade some opinions have come so i am going to the last question the major trade unions don't have a consensus on the issues now as the bad administration of earlier government cleared the path of present government and in fact helped them to attain a clear majority in fact multiplicity of unions and lack of co coordination between them has fueled the government to become more autocratic comrade yes this is a problem but this is the historic development we cannot erase it if we want even in banking sector you have two unions of the employees four unions of the employees that's a reality you have to address that and despite being different organizations at times you are moving together a number of sectoral strike you have done unitedly the defense all the three federation including the bms federation are working together and struggling against this corporatization come privatization so it is not that it i think it's a uh, not a correct uh, uh, the impression that the multiplicity definitely creates problem but during last particularly 2009 onwards all the central trade unions of the country including all independent federations including your bank employees federation aib and others defense employees federation and in central government and state government employees federation they are a part of the same platform and we are unitedly stage uh, has gone for at least more than 7 8 strikes since 2009 and from 2091 it is altogether 20 plus general uh, national level strike beside several this sectoral strike where jointly st uh, strike has taken place so there are multiplicity but at the same time the situation has so developed and here the class conscious movement are playing a major role in creating that atmosphere and separate uh, situation and in generating that heat that temperature in the environment mm -hmm. that all are compelled to come together in the single platform of struggle and that was happening in most of the places there are problems operating problems but if patiently that are handled that can be addressed and united movement is possible many many thanks comrade tapon shen you have enlightened us especially on the development of mid 60s the political developments at that time and the question of uh, many questions which were unanswered you have answered it and especially the role of the government in different public sector enterprises not only in banking sector not only in financial sector in defense in coal in mines in steel in civil aviation in all the in all public sector enterprises government are coming out <coughs> to attack the employees to attack the people common people so we are very much enlightened thanking all the participants now i ask advice comrade prakash rai our office bearer 
to extend the vote of thanks. Comment Prakash Rai. Comment Prakash. Comment Prakash. Comment Prakash. Comment Debashish. Prakash, please unmute. Prakash. Prakash, unmute. That is the problem. Prakash, we extend a vote of thanks. Please. You unmute first. You unmute. Prakash. Now it is unmute. audible. Uh, yes, 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 yes. Yes, yes. Comrade ah. President and Comrade General Secretary. And Comrade Vice President, both Comrade Jayadev Das Gupta and Pradeep Biswas, and all of Office Bureau of Bank Employees Federation of India, as well as the representative of all individual banks with leaders and cadres, I am putting my heartfelt greetings to all of you on the occasion of. Bank nationalization webinar. Comrade, especially I am putting my heartfelt greetings to Comrade Tapan Shen, whose presence is very much valuable in this webinar. And the Comrade, if we will think that the new liberalization policy was inaugurated by Congress government in the year 1991 propagated for more than two decades, implemented by Modi government with unprecedented enthusiasm to please the capitalists. Rapid changes have been happening with lightning speed in banking industry. Amalgamation and merger have become the order of the day. Law and regulation are amended in bulk to suit the owner of private capitals, both in Indians and foreign. And comrades, all the action and norms of government of India is to denationalization of the banks and make a way for the favorable measures in favor of the corporate house. If we will go and see, also pertinent to mention that since nationalization of banks on 19th July 1969, covering almost 52 years, the government as well as Reserve Bank of India, only aspiration that banking industry needs urgent privatization through the process of merger, amalgamation, sale of shares, liquidation, closure, acquisition of any bank. Comrade, in this scenario, in 2021, the banking industry is facing so much difficulties, which was narrated fairly by Comrade Tapan the General Secretary of CITU. He has explained all aspects, but the battle we have to fight. The comrades in the banking industry has to strengthen the uh, forces and maximum in a way to reach the public also. If we will fight within our union, we have made everything. But we are not able to 100% to reach to the public. We have to reach to the public. That is the call of the day. And Comrade Sen has already told that if our action and program will reach to the public, reach to the common man, Definitely, there will be success by which the government will also be halt in the process. The last, not the least, 
after the nationalization of bank we be if we, we can analyze the there is a stupendous growth in banking industry bank and the expansion staff strength banking growth profit and everything that is the number one is doorstep banking which was which is available till today by the employees and officer of the bank the both political as well as economic interest of the governments the day of indira gandhi was garib hota and that program also in little bit it was fulfilled by the employees of the bank only they have made it possible and they have made it success so comrade the all the action and norms of government of india is to denationalization of the banks and make the aoa to the private player and corporate house so in this situation the last my suggestion in this regard is we have seen after nationalization bank has growth banking growth has in many fold but simultaneously after 2014 if, if we can see the it is a grave concern that present bjp led nda government has made the banking industry before 2014 it was 27 banks public sector banks now it is 12 only so in this way government is thinking government is also trying to minimize the bank to not only in favor of the corporate house but to it is a very much damaging factor to the employees of the bank so my request to all of you in this occasion in this webinar at least we must ready for the future tax what our leaders what our guide has already expressed we are bound to that and in the last it is also my pleasure and privilege to cordially thanks to our guest speaker comrade tapan sen and to be kind enough for his deliberation and make it a must despite his busy schedule thanking you to all thanks comrade over to jaydev da Okay, comrade. Thank you, comrade Prakash. Now our seminar is webinar is over. Thanking all the participants. I am taking leave. Devashish. Okay. 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 Ah, okay, Tapanda. Thank you. Hmm. Still bye. No worries.